Um, thanks everyone for coming tomorrow, today. Uh, it's obviously very early in the morning, it's Saturday. I admire your enthusiasm. Um, it obviously wasn't that crazy last night. <laughs> um, before I uh, present myself, I want to tell you that I'm going to be speaking about uh, how freelancing and remote work is actually changing the world. I hope you're going to like my topic and that you're going to have a lot of questions. So, uh, I'm Ines. I come from Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, not that far away. Um, I've traveled to 20 countries and visited more than 45 cities in the last two and a half years. Um, I'm a technical sourcer and a community leader for TopTal. I also do a lot more things for TopTal. Um, and I'm a part of a speaker's network, so network obviously. And uh, my day-to-day -day job is to locate amazing talent online. Um, basically stalk them, stalk their GitHub profiles, Stack Overflow profiles, LinkedIn profiles, Facebooks, and Twitters as well. I'm the ultimate stalker, but people pay me to do it. Um, and uh, I then reach out to um, tell these people about freelancing and how they can easily break into it. Once I do, once they join the network, I also help them pass the screening process by uh, telling them how to prepare and what are some good practices there. Um, how many of you have heard of TopTal before? Ooh, okay, quite a lot. So basically you guys know that we are a network that deals with developers, designers, and finance experts, and our job is to make sure that talent who uh, develops, designs, or consults in finance field get their clients, uh, get, high, get really elite clients, and uh, have a lot of uh, work to do. And we do that all over the world, basically. We are present in more than 100 cities um, in the world, and in Ukraine we have more than 100 engineers who are working for us on any of the types of freelance options, part-time, full-time, or hourly. And uh, how many of you have actually worked as a freelancer before? Not that many. And uh, how many of you have tried working remotely? Okay, a lot. So good audience. Um, Let's take a look, take a moment to take a look at this picture of an ultimate freelancer in the wild. So, what can you see? A worried face? <laughs> Phone in one hand, laptop down there, there's some coffee over there, Wi-Fi. But what are the most important things on this picture? Is... <laughs> there has to be... Oh, wait, my clicker is playing games. Oh. There has to be a computer. <laughs> um, what is happening? Okay, there has to be a good view, obviously. Uh, it's really good if you have some casual clothes. You don't have to be suited up. And um, altogether, this is winning. Not a, not, not a bad thing to do, you know, working from the beach, even if, there, if there's a winter and it's cold, if you like doing this, it's a, it's a pretty good thing to do. Um, and uh, let's look at some stats a little bit. This is, these are the stats that Forbes uh, was um, nice enough to do and uh, provide for the world to share. So uh, freelancer workforce in the U.S. is currently around 35%, and they estimated this to grow by 2020 to 50%. Uh, they say that 63% uh, of the independent workforce is, has uh, started freelancing by choice and not by necessity. While 80% of these people are super happy with freelancing and they find it better than doing a traditional job. So working remotely hasn't always been that easy, but it definitely has become much, much easier. And obviously some of the perks are a better salary because you have definitely lower costs. And you can work whenever you want and from wherever you want. If you already got a job, that's not a problem. There are plenty of freelancing opportunities. You can do it part-time, you can do it hourly. If you have 10 to 20 hours per week available to try out freelancing, it could work out. And then you can decide if you want to switch to full-time or do you just want to... I mean, freelancing is not for everybody, definitely. Luckily, there are plenty of opportunities for you to choose from just to try it out and see if it's something you might consider going long-term for. And uh, you can do all of this regardless of your previous education or where you come from. So 
how to break into it. It's not easy. I mean, for people who haven't tried this, it's, it's not just easy to leave everything and start freelancing. So um, there aren't any magical formulas. There are things that I do and they work for me, but those things might not work for you. So the best thing, if you're asking me, would be to try it out. Put yourself out there, try it out, and see uh, what works for you. But uh, of course, there are some best practices for everyone that we can go over later on. Uh, historically, freelancing has been um, facing some troubles, of course. And uh, let's go over them quickly. So the first one is obviously finding clients and doing the logistics. I mean, you don't just need to be an amazing coder, you also have to have amazing communication skills to be able to find a good client. But also, you need to have a little bit of um, mechanism to, to sell yourself, which is not something everyone can do. Then. Um, there's the issue of job security. Even if you secure one good client, it doesn't mean that you're going to get another one. And uh, then if you get a really good client, it doesn't mean that you're going to get paid. Sometimes clients can not be so good, and they can uh, fail to pay you for any of the reasons, which can be really uncomfortable and degrading. Um, and there's also a thing that nobody talks about. It's the isolation and not feeling a part of community and not having enough time to uh, take care of your own professional development. So, again, my pictures are not working. Okay. <laughs> so, in TopTal and in other networks, people are trying to um, take care of a lot of these issues for you so you guys can have 100% of your available time billable, which is something everyone is aiming for. So, TopTal takes care of uh, finding jobs for you, they also take care of your logistics, they uh, take care of uh, bringing you high-quality clients so you can actually have secure work. And they also make sure that you get paid. So after, you know, crossing over the hard hurdles, uh, you can then potentially achieve your uh, full potential as a freelancer. And uh, let's look at some uh, best practices in freelancing. Again, these are just some best practices, not necessarily, they don't necessarily apply to everyone here you need to figure out what are your best practices going to be. First of all, uh, you need to decide what do you want to do. Do you want to be a freelancer? Do you want to be a remote worker? Or do you want to be a digital nomad? Now, I got these pretty cool camera covers here and a pretty neat top top bag, some swag. So I'm willing to give all of these to people who um, give me their understanding of these three terms. So if, can so if someone can explain what's a freelancer, what's a remote worker, and what's a digital nomad, and how do these three actually differ? Mm -hmm. Okay, may I start from the end? like change the location okay. uh, because uh, they uh, travel even uh, like a family even with, with kids mm -hmm. and they change the location for some periods of time like one month two months and they uh, plan okay, they plan the internet connection they plan uh, the place where they live they work uh, for the work to not interfere their job and uh, they just travel around the globe and maybe from time to time get back to their native country, but for not too long. That's perfect. Do you want a bag or do you want a camera cover? Camera, all right. <laughs> there you go. Okay. okay. Did you want to move to the remote worker or freelancer or did you want to leave that to someone else? To someone else. Okay. <laughs> so, what would a freelancer be and what's a remote worker? <laughs> As far as I understand, freelancer is a person who finds the work, uh, a task, complete it, uh, get paid, and uh, start to find another task. So if, uh, if uh, he uh, don't have uh, the, the same uh, They don't have a fixed job place. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. Good. Do you want a camera cover or a bag? Uh, a bag. 
It's really convenient. And um, so a freelancer is someone who doesn't really have a job in, in the most traditional sense of the word. It's someone who has gigs or projects that they're working on, and from time to time, they're, very often, they're changing them. They don't have a conventional job. And what's a remote worker? Uh, it's a person who works on top towel. <laughs> <laughs> or elsewhere? <laughs> Anywhere else? <laughs> or any other uh, company that have offices around the world mm -hmm. and they a pleasure to see remote friendly or on remote um, uh, workers. So you'd say that that's someone who has a full-time job, but they're not obliged to be in a country where the company is necessarily situated. They don't have to be in the same place where the company is, right? Okay, good, makes sense. So do you want to come? Okay, I only have camera covers now. Please pass it on to him. Um, so one more thing. What's the difference between a freelancer and a remote worker? Uh-huh. Table work. Okay, good. Camera cover for you. <laughs> so, um, you can be a freelancer and a, and a remote worker and a digital nomad at the same time. You can be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You can make the combination that works for you. Personally, I'm a remote worker who does digital nomadism for six months in a year. In six months in the year, I like going back home. So, I'm neither of the things fully. And also, I'm a freelancer from time to time because I do other things um, besides my work. So as a remote worker, you would be on a full-time job with a company, not necessarily in the city. As a freelancer, you can do multiple gigs at the same time for multiple clients, whether that's location-based uh, or not. It doesn't really matter. And as a digital nomad, the point is to travel the world and work and bring the family on board or not. And... Um, you know, try to have fun as long as you like that. So, uh, how to tell if you're ready to freelance? There's no formula, really. You just need to try it out. But um, some of the things that you need to decide on is, of course, your freelancing style. Do you want to freelance full-time? Do you want to freelance part-time? Do you want to freelance hourly? Do you want to be a consultant? There are many, many options that you can explore. You need to take care of your financials here. So if you want to go into the freelancing world, you need to sit down, put your finances on paper, and uh, decide how, you want, how much you need to get paid to live comfortably and pay everything else that you need to pay as a freelancer. And to be able to do all of this, you need to make your portfolio sparkle. So I've included one really nice example of a really good web developer portfolio here. Um, you can take a look later on if you want, but what stands out in this one is the fact that you can easily find how to communicate, how to connect with this person. You can find his Twitter, LinkedIn, and his email. There are also tips on how to actually contact him, and all of his um, work is listed there nicely. You know, it's not it, the portfolio is not busy. It's very clear and very easy to read. And if you're doing Ruby or Ruby on Rails, that's winning definitely, because currently in the world, everyone is looking for you guys. Everyone wants to work with you and everyone needs your knowledge. If you're doing some of the other technologies like JavaScript, uh, React, Angular, Node.js, uh, even React Native or mobile development, DevOps recently has become big, any of these technologies are definitely the golden spot at the moment on the market. And developers from Eastern Europe seem to be very smart and very capable, re really good English skills, so nothing is, nothing is really a barrier here for you guys. As for your productivity, this can be tricky. Not everyone, ca not everyone is self-driven. Not everyone can get up in the morning, sit down, and just start working. Some people will really prefer going to the office just because of the sake of going to the office, and when you get there, your, your brain instantly tells you work. So, to break into this part easily, you can use a lot of tools. There is plenty of tools available. They're, most of them are for free. Uh, you can explore this. 
and uh, find the ones that, works for you, that work for you best. These are the ones that I've been using from time to time, not always at the same time, but for example, most of you probably heard of Pomodoro. It makes you take breaks. That's why I love it. So you need to work really with high focus for a certain amount of time, and then you need a break. And then there's rescue time as, as well. If you spend some time to really set it to your own needs, it can actually uh, track how productive you are per day, and then it sends you these nice reports where you can see what you did wrong and what you did good. Uh, there's freedom. It's a really neat tool that blocks all your social media, so you don't get <laughs> so you don't get tempted to open them if you don't want to open them. Um, again, some people work perfectly fine with Facebook the entire day open, so it's really up from person to person. And there's the time doctor that I use to uh, check my daily productivity as well, and there there's a huge list. Feel free to explore it. Moving to remote work. Here, what's really important is your work organization. So you basically should track your hours. As a remote worker, things can go crazy. You can um, forget to wash your teeth. You can forget to change your clothes. There are so many things that can go wrong. But what really helps is good organization and planning ahead and uh, tracking your hours. You can use old school paper or you can, you can lose your notepad or whatever and just track what you're doing. Or you can use an app. There's an app for it. And uh, since you decided to become a remote worker, there's a good chance your client is in a different time zone or your team is in a different time zone or you're just traveling somewhere and working in a very peculiar time zone that's not compatible with anyone else. So here, uh, Word Time Buddy helps a lot. You can see all the time zones of relevant people or teammates comparatively to yours, and you can see at what time you need to be available or how many hours of overlap you need to plan to be online, because it's really important to have online and offline time, otherwise you'll go crazy. So related to that, you need to stay healthy. Um, both your physical and mental health here is really important. Uh, as for the physical health, uh, you should plan some time to exercise. If you're not into exercising, this just means that you haven't tried all the exercises that are out there. Everyone can find something that to, to make their blood rush. It doesn't need to be conventionally running or, or, or doing the gym. There are so many things that can get your blood flowing. That's, that's what we're aiming for here. And uh, <laughs> mental health as well is really important. Uh, staying Alone in the house is not healthy for anyone, so you need to make sure that you find a co-working space from time to time, go out there, meet people, see other faces, talk to them, exchange knowledge, it's going to help your mental health. Leading to a proper, natural and healthy work-life balance that everyone needs to establish. Moving forward to digital nomadism. Um, now, I would really, really like to be a digital nomad, but something that keeps me from doing this, I just need to come back somewhere. I need to have my own room with everything familiar because I'm half an introvert, half an extrovert, so I need to have familiar faces and people who really know me. Half time of the year and half time of the year, I really don't. I just enjoy traveling and meeting new people. And how I do this, I uh, work from interesting uh, cafes in the Bahamas, or I go and organize a co-working day anywhere where I travel or I just use meetup.com to connect to Ina or people like her. Basically, I put myself out there. It's risky, but it's totally worth it in the end. It gets me so much happiness and, and brings so much smiles. And what's really cool to do also is travel the world where you have your colleagues. If you have a colleague somewhere where you've never been, it's pretty neat to just go there and that colleague can actually take you to places, do the, uh, what, what the locals do, bring you to eat amazing food, which is basically what I've been doing for the last 10 days. People are taking me to eat stuff that I never had before, and the stuff is so good, honestly. Just, if, if nothing else, try digital nomadism thingy just to eat the food. The food is awesome. And save up. Nobody talks about this. If you're a digital nomad, if you're a remote worker, if you're a freelancer, you need to be very um, realistic with your money. You need, to, you need to find a way to save the money, leave some aside for the dark days or for the future because you never know what's going to happen. And um, it helps to plan. If you're traveling, it really helps to know where you're going 
to make the spreadsheets, to count on your budget, to explore the cheap locations, to, to check all the Airbnbs if you're doing the Airbnb thingy. There's even couch surfing. I've tried it. It's, it's not that bad. But I'm too old for that now. So there's Airbnb. <laughs> and um, yeah, with, with a little bit of planning and setting aside some money, planning the, to travel around the world the cheapest way, um, you, can do, you can do a lot. This can take you a long way. And you need to have a plan B always, not just for Wi-Fi, which is like number one priority that you need to have wherever you travel if you're going to be working on the road. Uh, you need to have a plan B both for your accommodation and for the Wi-Fi. What I'm doing is basically carrying around a um, 3G or 4G card always so I can be connected immediately when I get off a plane or a train or a bus. And then uh, there are also really neat pocket Wi-Fi's. Um, plenty of options there since freelancing and digital nomadism is still quite big. People are, they're, they're never stopping to produce these things. It's really cool. They, they want to help us achieve our full potential and not be, you know, restrained with the location or restrained with the job from nine to five. I don't think that that's, that's a bad thing. Just to make sure. Um, and of course, a huge thing, you need to be safe. I haven't always traveled safe, and um, there have been multiple stories that I can tell you about, but I haven't traveled safe, and many things have happened, and I don't regret them, but what I've learned are these three things. You need to have and buy your travel insurance in time. You need to take care of your visas. <laughs> you're traveling somewhere where you're not welcome without a visa. But also, you can just avoid this. There are people who are lazy, and that's perfectly fine. Just try to find locations where you don't need a visa, and everything else is going to be much easier. And uh, of course, really important, read up on local laws and be respectful of these laws. Laws in Thailand and laws in, 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 in Ukraine are not the same, not even similar. Backlight. You are going to explore a new culture and you're going to see a new location. You're definitely going to want to bring souvenirs. So don't bring a heavy bag or something. Bring, bring a light pack it, bring a light suitcase, but leave some space in it for the souvenirs. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And use your networks. I have a really good story to tell about this one. Uh, one of our teammates traveled to Peru because he wanted to try uh, re remote work and uh, explore new exciting locations. And one day he just woke up not having his phone. He is basically completely lost. It was very scary. So he called his boss to tell him he's not, obviously not going to come to work. And his boss immediately tapped into TopTal's network, found someone who's in Peru, working for TopTal, available now. And that guy immediately ran to help this guy. They never met each other, but he went, he transferred some money, took him home, fed him, did whatever he could do to help him. And that, was, that turned out to be the best thing that happened to him. So use your network. Be aware of your network, connect to these people, be nice to them, and uh, from time to time, send a message. Just say hi, be polite and nice. N you never know who you're going to need one day and who's going to need you. So that's why you need to, you should, you don't need to, but it's really convenient if you become a part of a bigger community. So this is a um, working like a boss feed from TopTal, and you can see people posting photos from everywhere. This one, the first one upstairs, is that one <laughs> from... Um, from a very exotic location, obviously. Um, and uh, the rest of these are also from um, top tellers who are traveling and working remotely. And I want to finish this presentation with a really powerful thought and a really powerful quote from Y Combinator, um, from, actually from Paul Graham, who's a co-founder of Y Combinator. And uh, he said that 95% of great programmers are actually born outside of the US. Um, so guys, keep this in mind. <laughs> People from Eastern Europe and Europe in general are really smart, really capable, and they know their technology. So I think it's stopping you. Jakuyu, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure. <laughs> pleasure to be here. And if you're ever into trying freelancing, I'm the person you should be speaking with. Remote work as well. I can provide you with multiple opportunities. And this is my email address. This is my uh, Twitter and Instagram handle. Feel free to follow me to see where I'm going next and what I'm going to be eating in Belarus. Um, <laughs> and yeah.
don't be shy. Send a message whenever. Doesn't have to be one of these days, but sometimes in the future I'm available and um, I'm going to be happy to connect. I'm going to be here for the entire day as well. Feel free to catch me on a coffee break. I have many stories to share with you and this is just like a teeny tiny bit of my uh, freelancing slash remote work slash digital nomadism experience. I hope you enjoyed. Any questions? Perfect, I'll have questions. Okay, I've been working for nine years and I've been into freelancing for only two years and eight months now. So there are a lot of years behind me and as for the freelance option, I've been only doing it for two years and eight months. And how many jobs? I think six before, yeah. Never. I mean, never, never, <laughs> honestly. The only thing that could make me go back is the pure necessity. If something happens, God forbid, or whatever forbid, um, and I have to go back, then of course I'm, I can adjust to whatever. But if you're asking me, <laughs> I would never, never go back from working from an office. It's definitely not as good as this thing that I'm doing is. <laughs> Thanks. Um, since you were the first one and I have one more camera cover, you get it. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a really good one. Okay, I get bored after a month. 30 days, it's, whew, I'm like itching. <laughs> I need to go. <laughs> but the longest I've been was when I was injured, and I think that was around two months since I started this whole thing of uh, traveling six months somewhere and being home somewhere two months and I was I'm not gonna say I was depressed I wasn't depressed but I was very much eager to go w once I tried it I got this feeling that um, I'm sort of stagnating when I'm home when I'm traveling I'm learning new things I'm meeting new people there's so many new experiences so much food again I'm so boring but you get my point <laughs> Like Another really good one. I'm always torn between these two things because back home I have this amazing monitor. I have my external keyboard, my trackpad is there, my cats are there, beautiful lightning, everything is perfect. So I really like staying home, but after two to three days or a week, I also like maybe going to a co working space. Sometimes there's a period when I can not get out of the house for weeks because. I'm working in sprints and there's a lot of things to do and I just prefer being home. I, I don't like meeting new people when I have so, much, so many things to do and there's the gym and there's the family. There's so many things that I have to do even when I'm home. But if there's a casual period that I don't really need to, you know, give 100, 110% of my energy to, to work and, and these very few necessities that, that I have to do daily, then I like to spend a lot of time in the co-working spaces because they're usually very beautiful as well. But then there's no monitor, there's no, or there's no trackpad. I mean, there's, my laptop stand is not there. But there are people, so, you know. So, so you feel more concentrated when you are at your home uh, than in the co-working? Depends what I'm doing. It doesn't make you feel less when you're at home? No, not really. It uh, depends on, uh, I have um, many things that I do. If I'm just sourcing, and if my job is to focus, look at the code, look at the GitHubs, then I'm staying home. But if I'm doing talks, and if I'm um, calling people, and if I'm um, doing organization and stuff, then I'm more relaxed doing it among other people because I can actually pull some of them and have them help me and ask them how they did it before, if they had some experience. So I'm equally relaxed, but it really depends on the tasks. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a personal question, but uh, what, person, uh, what percent of uh, monthly income do you recommend to save? What percent? Another good one. Um, at least 10% monthly. At least, if possible. Sometimes th this varies. 
If I'm traveling, I sometimes can't save 10%, but if I'm home, I can save even 20. And if I travel to Thailand, I can save phew, a lot. I know there are more questions. Okay, thank you very much.